Tesla delivered just a little bit over 435,000 vehicles in Q3 below everyone's expectation, including mine, which was just a little bit over 436,000 vehicles, but this was expected. Tesla shut down their factories because they're doing upgrades on all their factories so we can have higher capacity for the quarters to come, which is a very bullish sign as well as the Cybertruck, which any day now should be the announcement. But Q3 earnings is coming out literally in less than a week, I think about four to five days from today, which I'll be on Oracle's channel, live streaming it, which I will be multicasting here as well, so you guys can watch us on our channel as well. That's gonna be very exciting, but the question is now, what will the EPS be in the stock price? How bad would this delivery number impact the numbers? And in my opinion, I do believe it's gonna be worse than Q2s. And I'm gonna to explain to you guys why in this video through the charts. So if you guys are ready, man, smash that like button and hit subscribe if you haven't already, man. Let's go. Now, as usual, to determine the average selling price, we always take a look at this chart here. Again, I don't know who made this chart. But shout out to you, my man. The link of this chart is in the description below. This guy pretty much tracks all the price cuts and price increases every second, like at the second. It's really good. So I highly recommend it. So let's start off with the S. The Model S had a big dip. Look at that. And that's because they brought down the prices for the Plaid and the Standard Range. Now, I'm not going to lie, guys. This was a little bit of a shock to me. I mean, look at the price from $108,000 all the way down to just below $90,000 for an S Plaid. That is ridiculous almost a twenty thousand dollar discount like that, that's just that's insane same thing with the long range from eighty eight and a half thousand to seventy five thousand like a fourteen fifteen thousand drop sheesh that's just crazy it's either that the prices the cost went down that they can do this or they just want to sell more you know there's a there's a pro and con about this but we'll get to that in a bit but this will really bring down the average selling price if there's no increase in sales in s or x if there is an increased sales of snx then we will 100 percent have an increase in average selling prices because these numbers are a whole lot more and margin as well because the snx they have typically higher margins than the three and y but if you guys pay attention and look at the date here this happened on september 6th around then that they brought down the s and x we'll take a look at the x after but the s and x did brought prices down big time and looking at q2 numbers they didn't sell as much as we would like and so with that um we'll get to the chart in a bit but i don't think average selling price will be higher than q2 i'm just saying that so look at the s big drop and the numbers that came out for q2 deliveries s and x didn't sell as much as we would like so not good so far. Model X, however, is the exact same thing. The Plaid went down from 108,000 to just below 90,000, same as the S. But man, just look where it was before. It was at 139,000, now it's 90,000. You could get it for 50,000 cheaper, dollars cheaper. Talk about like buy, buy high, sell low. The, the guys who bought at like 139,000, they're pissed that now you can get it for a 90,000. A freaking X Plaid. I, I drove that car and it was something else. You guys can check out the video here, but that's just insane. The long range, same thing from 99,000 almost all the way down to $80,000. That's just crazy, man. That's insane. I'm surprised they didn't sell as much in Q2 as they should have. But nonetheless, this is insane. This is absolutely insane. Let's take a look at the Model 3. Now, this is exciting because the Model 3 has Highland that came out, which is like the refresh everyone is ordering right now. Although we won't see much of um, a data until in the next couple of months, mainly starting from China first. So any prices you guys see here, it's all the older version, not the newer version. And yes, we still have a dip here as well, but in Q4, which is October 10th. So really, they didn't really drop prices the entirety of Q3, not so much. So we're not too concerned about the three. Let's take a look at the Y. And it looks like the same thing for the Y. They didn't seem to drop as much only in Q3. It looks like Tesla, there's a trend going on now that every quarter, Tesla drops the prices, the beginning of every quarter, which is really interesting. So the big news here is we did have some big uh, price drops, but mainly from the S and X. The three and Y, they stayed pretty much flat the entire time. Now, because we got Q3 delivery numbers out already, we see that S and X did not sell as much as we would like. So this is not gonna bring the average selling price higher. In fact, this is gonna bring the average selling price lower. And uh, I think the number that I put here is a little bit optimistic too. But nonetheless, let's take a look at the chart, guys. If you guys are ready to figure out the revenue and profits and the average selling price, all that kind of stuff, smash that like button. 
because I know it's not smashed. Come on, man. All right, let's go. So here's a Tesla stock price prediction chart. By the way, guys, this is all available on Patreon and it's all customizable. You guys can go there, play around with the change in numbers, see what the numbers will be. So it's really, really cool. And it's a way of supporting me. If you guys are interested, man, I really appreciate it. If you guys can at least check the page out, over here, link in the corner. All right, let's go back to this. So I put the average selling price or average vehicle sales for Q3 down to 43,000. Now it looks like 42, 42 and a half thousand is more likely, but I'm gonna put 43,000. Automotive credits, I put here $400 million. Services, of course, more Teslas you have on the road, the higher service is going to be. With about 8% profit margin on that, about $200 million. Leasing, about $575 million. Now, leasing, I do think this is a bit optimistic number. I do think it's gonna be a little bit less than that because interest rates are high. Leasing numbers are high, despite that Tesla is working very hard to extend the year. So all you gotta pay is like 329, 33, 399, whatever the price is recently, which is freaking a bargain for a Tesla. Still, I do think leasing is not gonna be the greatest thing and financing at the same time, but leasing does bring good profits to Tesla about over 40% around $236 million in profits. Vehicle gross profits, I put it here at 16.5%. That's only because we brought down the average selling price and Tesla not producing more vehicles, not benefiting from economy at scale. So the gross profits for vehicles does drop there as well. I got Tesla energy here at $1.9 billion. Tesla energy profits around an 18% margin, 342 million growing extremely fast. And I don't doubt this at all. Operating costs, pretty much almost 2 billion here. Taxes about 250 million. Other income, including interest. Now here's the thing guys, Tesla has a large cash, cash position and the banks are giving four, five, six percent interest rate back on your money. So I do think that's where Tesla has parked most of their money. Now, $500 million, I do think I'm being conservative. I think it is more closer to 700, maybe even $800 million. As we saw in Q2, 627 million, that's insane, but I put here $500 million. Stock-based compensation for Q3 and Q4 is $450 million as well. Shares outstanding, it is also being diluted. We're not getting any buybacks or anything yet. So obviously employees are still purchasing stock within the company. So we do have dilution still until Tesla does a buyback, which I think they'll do in a couple years or so. But now let's go ahead and see what the revenue profits will be for Q3 and the stock price. This is gonna get real juicy. So they did about 435,059 vehicle deliveries. Bam, look at that. We get total vehicle revenue, $18.7 billion. Sheesh, that's just, that's, that's crazy. That's less than Q1s, wow. With 16.5 gross profits, we get over 3 billion, which is less than Q1 and Q2. I mean, that's just insane. Wall Street's not really gonna like it. Total auto revenue excluding credit is over $24 billion. So that's good, it's more than Q1s. Total gap gross margin, 17.7%. Here's the thing, check, check this out guys. Operating margin, 9.4%, less than Q2s. I am expecting a lower operating margin than in Q2s because they sold less than Q2 and they sold it at a lower price in Q3. So I think 9.4 makes sense in my opinion. Now I, I do think the street is saying a bit more, a whole lot less than that. But we're going to continue with this. Net income gap over 2.5 billion. Net income non-gap almost 3 billion. So again, more than Q1s. Well, I mean, non-gap is Q1 is more than Q3s, but non-gap Q3 is more than Q1 just with maybe like $30 million. EPS of 85 cents. The street right now is saying 73, 74 cents, I believe. I know they're all different but Yahoo is saying 74 cents, 85 cents is what I'm saying here. So I don't know, let's see if this will happen. Comment down below, what is your Q3 EPS prediction? 85 cents is, is what I'm saying is gonna happen. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. Most, most likely I'm probably gonna be wrong, but nonetheless, there's all a prediction, not facts, obviously. Let's go see what the stock price would be. If you guys are ready, man, smash that like button. I know I keep saying smash that like button, but smash that like button. Come on, let's go. Right now the PE is around 73, which would give it a stock price at the moment, not after Q3 earnings, but at the moment of around just below 260, which is my price target for 2023 since last year, around 260. So if we wanna maintain these prices, let's say 260, what it is right now, we gotta have a higher PE because look at this guys, the EPS on a quarterly basis is getting less. So you do need a higher PE for this. With that, we need a PE of around 79, maybe around the 80s, 79 and a half to be 
around the 260 mark if you want to keep it here. Now, here's the thing. This is this is a beat. If they can do 85 cents and uh, Street is saying 74, 75 cents, that's a 10 cent beat. And if they do beat it, I do expect some sort of a optimism in the market for Tesla, probably giving the P as high as 85, maybe 90, just itching the 300 mark. If Cybertruck news comes out, maybe we can break past that, maybe to 310, 3. 15 nothing to do with q3 at all because now everyone's going to be looking forward getting the numbers now you know 2 million vehicles the price is now 50,000. imagine the revenue and profits off that then i can probably see pe going as high as 95 100 possibly even 105 in the 340s 350s around there because it'll be a lot of optimism in the market because now they got 2 million pre-order pre-orders of the cyber truck and now they can make it and sell it which will bring in billions for tesla so that's really cool. But I'm going to be a little bit more conservative and just give it a PE of, let's say, around 85, you know, 279, 280, around there. That's what I'm going to say. I mean, everyone becomes pessimistic and we hear no news, no news from the Cybertruck probably go down to a PE of 70, 230, 65, 213s. If you go down to a 60, that's breaking the 200 mark. But I doubt we're going to go down there unless we have some sort of a panic in the market, a bad panic. So I'm just going to put 85 PE around there. I think this would be a fair price for Tesla. And with this suspense of the Cybertruck news and all that kind of stuff. Again, if the news comes out, I'm sure a higher PE is, is the case. But let's go ahead and take a look at Q4. In Q4, I increased the average selling price from 43,000 to 43 and a quarter. Only because I do suspect that SNX do get sold more because it's Q4. Usually a lot of customers do buy vehicles at the end of the year for, you know, Christmas time and all that kind of stuff. So I do suspect the average selling price would be a bit more than that. Credits, I reduced it down to 375 million. You guys can see services and leasing. Vehicle gross profits, I increased it back to 17.5%. I'm gonna go into that why in a bit, but energy around 2.5 billion in revenue and profits of half a billion dollars, which would be absolutely insane. Operating costs about $2.1 billion, taxes 275, other income $650 million. Now, the reason why I put vehicle gross profits at 17. percent 5% is because I do believe in Q4 they're going to deliver, deliver 500,000 vehicles. Obviously, economy scale does work in Tesla's benefit in that case. And average selling price has been increased as well. So two of those, both those together will give a vehicle gross profits, you know, par into Q2. Not too sure if that will happen or not, but guessing here, that's what, what I think will happen. So 500,000 vehicle deliveries, look at that. We have a record total automotive revenue of over $21.6 billion. Total auto revenue X credits almost $28 billion. Total gap gross profits of 18.5%. An operating margin of 10.9%. Now that's going to be a big shocker if this happens in Q4. That's going to be a really big shocker. 10.9%. You went from 9.6, 9.4 and almost back to 11% in Q4. That's crazy. That would mean 2024 is going to be an awesome year for Tesla. Net income gap will be over $3.4 billion and non-gap almost $3.9 billion. Look at this, guys. Total revenue in the last four quarters is over $100 billion and net income over $11 billion. So absolutely a sheesh moment. EPS of $1.11. That's app that, that would be awesome if that's the case in Q4. That would mean in 2024, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, these numbers are going to be history. That's all I got to say. But EPS on a fiscal year is still lower than Q3s. We went from 3.39 to 3.51 to 3.28, 3.20. That would mean if you want to maintain the 279 in Q3, we need to have a higher PE, which would be a P of 87. And this will be the stock price of 279. Now, here's the thing. By Q4, and when this number gets released in Q4, it's probably going to be when the Cybertruck is already out because this is going to be the first quarter of 2024. So Cybertruck is coming out. We have some probably other news coming in. So I do think a PE of 95 would probably make sense. Actually hitting over 304 bucks per share. Probably in the 100 PEs, around 320. If you want to get really bullish here and the market is really optimistic, 100, 105 PE, around 336. But I'm going to give it a PE of 90 here. I do think staying conservative makes sense. 288, maybe 95, 304. Heck, let's just give it a PE of 94 so we can have it over 300 or just at 300. Happy. But if the market is not happy with this and we don't have the cyber truck and there is other bad news coming in, they continue to reduce prices, maybe a PE of 80, maybe 75, 65 even. I think around these prices would make sense. And if we do have a panic sell or a big sell-off in the market, 
probably but i'm gonna you know back to 94 pe i think this would make sense here again guys this would be between january 21st of 2024 to april 20th of 2024 so really 300 bucks per share by then i think does make sense that's all i'm saying overall if you guys see here total deliveries in 2023 is over 1.8 million vehicles year over year growth from 2022 to 2023 is 39 percent which is an absolute sheesh moment realistic price ranges that i think will happen at the end of the year is anywhere between 270 and 330. again guys this is only a prediction and a prediction alone take all this with a grain of salt and do your dd so guys take this eps in mind 85 cents if they can hit 85 cents I'm happy with anything below that and you know it's gonna be a little concerning a little bit not too much let's see how q4 will be but i think 85 cents does make sense the, the street is saying 74 cents they may bump it up to 78 cents at the end of the maybe in a couple of days or so you know how wall street works but i'm saying 85 cents but nonetheless it is all quarterly and anything could happen on the quarterly basis we're saying q4 is going to be a monstrous quarter but at the end of the day we do have to keep things realistic on the short term in 2022 i predicted that in 2023 the price target for tesla is going to be around 260 and guess what it's been hitting this number or hovering around this number for the past four months or something so i guess i can say i was right haha <laughs> but in 2024 i've already made a price target for then as well and you guys can check the video over here it's a sheesh moment guys don't be disappointed trust me you guys will have a good time there and get some great value and information guys get your merch i bought the dip merch or your dollar cost averaging shirt i'm wearing one right now thank you for your support if you guys did get one and the mugs and all that kind of stuff and subscribe for more and i shall see you guys in the next video see ya